Welcome to New Zealand and this offshore fishing trip of a lifetime. I'm joining the guys from Burley Pro on a kayak fishing mothership off the north coast of New Zealand. Over the next two weeks, we'll be staying on the Bounty Hunter, exploring places like Great Barrier Island. <laughs> Arid Island. And my favourite place, the Mokes, or the Mokohino Islands. As we explore, the crew and I will take you through the insane experiences that this place has got to offer. <laughs> How cool is that? And we'll make our way around kayaking and discover some seriously insane crystal clear waters. I can see it. Look at that. How amazing is this? We'll fish for one of the hardest finding fish that New Zealand's got to offer. <laughs> oh, yes! Woo! Of course, there'll be laughs and we'll create some insane memories. What is up, party people? Join me and the crew as we travel out to the islands and I search for my first New Zealand snapper at the famous Great Barrier Island. But this is where the New Zealand adventure begins. So it's windy here in Australia and a good friend of mine, Marty from Burley Pro, invited me to get out of this cold, miserable weather and head out with him to their R&D company trip. Now, it's my job on this trip to collect some content for some of their new products and to help test the gear in some tough conditions. But on the side, I'm gonna film and take you with me for the next two weeks. After packing my gear, jumping on the plane, we grabbed our luggage and by bus went to a little town called Lee. The first place that we stayed was our captain's place and I'll introduce them in a moment, but when we got there, it was evident that this trip would be special. Right, so we got in pretty late last night into Auckland. Uh, we've driven out to Lee on these uh, these awesome little roads and this tiny little bus, which is pretty fun. Uh, but today, today is day zero of the trip and we are just getting sorted. So we've got eight kayaks that haven't been on the water in 18 months. So we're gonna make sure that they are all seaworthy and good to go. Not only that, with uh, Burley Pro, I've come out with a bunch of product recently, like the uh, Bumper Bros and none of, uh, none of the kayaks have got that stuff on there. So uh, I'll take you around here and show you what we're about to do but it's basically set up day for the next day and a half uh, until we get onto the water. We've got the PFDs and the life jackets down there. Uh, we're gonna have a look at these new live wells. You might've seen those on social media, but uh, that's, that's a trial version. Uh, you got the little the case there, making sure the batteries are full up uh, and good to go. All the FPV stuff there as well as the uh, the safety equipment, the walkie talkies, and here those bumper bros I was talking about as well. We're also putting, uh, we're putting all the orbs on all the, on all the kayaks, yeah? Everyone, bro. Yeah, cool, sweet. So they'll be there as well. Look around, we're gonna have a look, make sure that the uh, Mirage drives have got heaps of grease in them, that the railblazer mounts are still good to go. Have a look at the seats as well. Give those a, a good gurney because I don't want to uh, end up with a spider or anything on my backside. Um, as we walk through, this is where we're. So where the magic happens. So I got a lot of gear to get through as well. So these are the new Daiwa Saltist MQ uh, reels. They're rigged with Tasline uh, braid, a number of different versions. Basically, 20 pound up to 80 pound. We've got the rods down here. You can see everyone's got these awesome rods, tubes. That's mine. Did the job. Cost me twenty dollars. So that's good. Show the place that we're staying though. Here's Michelle. She owns it. She's getting out of the shot real quick. <laughs> I think she's shy. Uh, but let me switch to a wide-angle camera. There we go. Uh, sun's not out at the moment, so it's not perfect. But uh, this is what we're waking up to at the moment. I think we'll uh, we might do some product filming and do some uh, install videos and whatnot on this deck here with that uh, sun out at the back is just absolutely awesome, but check that view out. They've got a, there's a rainfall, like a, there's a little waterfall down here and you can hear it, this, this place is outstanding, it's amazing. That's their bedroom, man. That, imagine waking up to that every day. So jealous. 
With the guys working downstairs, Marty and I decided to put some smoked beef cheeks on and let them sit and cook for the afternoon. As those beef cheeks were cooking, I got the camera out and started doing the product shots for some kayaking gear, but the skies opened up and it really became beautiful. It was sunny and it was too good not to get the drone out. So I flew it down from the balcony, down to the rocks, down at the beach there and started just snapping away. That night sitting there with our bellies full watching the fire, there was definitely an excitement in the air. I could feel it in my bones. I knew something special was going to happen and I just didn't know how long it was going to take and it, it didn't take long at all. So we woke up early this morning and between the eight of us, it didn't really take long to get the boat ready. We got our reels on, we got some ice and some gear on, the kayaks went onto the roof and we had some food in there as well. A little bit rough going out, but once we're there, it's going to be sweet as a nut. We got a safety brief from Aaron, the captain, and this is a great segue. Let me introduce you to the crew of eight, our captain, and the captain of the Bounty Hunter is all-round legend, Captain A.A. Aaron. Now, this guy doesn't know it yet, but he's about to have a surprise 50th on this boat. It's not his 50th, but we're going to throw him one anyway. And you wouldn't find a more accommodating and genuine guy. His first mate, and the guy that does all the horrible jobs that none of us want to do is Cam Cam. On a side note, this guy could fish, and he saw him hook into that kingfish in the intro. Next, we've got the owner of Burley Pro. He's the brains behind the trip. This is the reason that we're here. And if you haven't met him, life is pretty, how would you say, colourful uh, with him around. With him, he's brought one of his employees, Bo, his old man, and his father, Ian and his soon-to-be father-in-law, Peter Pan, the flying man. The last guy on the boat I'm pretty excited to meet, and I'm told that he is the godfather of New Zealand offshore fishing. The guy's name is Steve Tapp. He is going to be my personal guide for the next two weeks as I try and catch that once-in-a-lifetime 20-pound snapper. And this guy's no joke. His biggest snapper is a 36-pound snapper, two-pound off the world record, and potentially the second biggest snapper ever caught. Okay guys, so we're going to head off to the barrier for our, uh, our first part of the journey. So this is going to be our staging uh, point for the next five days. The, uh, the whole idea here is it'll give you a comfortable start and get you used to the systems and what have you before we move on to other zones. The place we'll be is Heratonga and it gives us an opportunity for trophy fish in fact probably if everything goes right we might even end up with a 20 pounder who knows the opportunity really just to sort of get out around fish a bit of reef structure and get into that wash fishing mode as as we hunt the snapper down tonight we're looking at good conditions so for those that may be a little bit uh a little bit new to the game don't worry this is going to be an easy one you'll enjoy it That was the drive out, it was bloody epic uh, getting here. Uh, we're in a little bit of a cove at the moment, you'll see some top down shots. Uh, it is pretty windy out there right now, so we're pretty happy. The skipper, Aaron, has thrown the boat into this little harbour and uh, we're good to go. So the boys are out the back right now, they're uh, loading the kayaks. 
Just chilling out, getting the kayaks ready for the first time. So those guys are busy. I'll get out of their way as they unload all the kayaks. You got Aaron at the top there. Uh, but the plan for today is get an afternoon session in. So we left at about eight o'clock this morning. It took us about three and a half hours, four hours uh, to get out here. So it's early afternoon. We've got four hours of sunlight left uh, before we have to think about coming back. But uh, that wind will die off in the afternoon that we've got on here at the moment as well. The water will clear up. I'll get the drone up in a little bit. Uh, but today it's just going to be about, for me, soft plastics fishing. So that's something that I know that's, uh, that catches fish at home and here as well. I'm not a big jig guy. I haven't done a lot of jigging, but I'll, uh, I'll be watching these pros here today. <laughs> and they can show me some tips. See if I can get a fish. I want one fish. One fish today and I'll be happy. One fish. I joined the boys down the back, got my gear ready for the day. I'm not going to go through the gear today. I'll go through all of that tomorrow. The gear, the kayak, exactly what we're using today. We're just getting ready and going for a fish. Finally. Right, so finally here we are. We are on the water. We've got the guys behind me still loading. I've been that dude. I'm the first one off the water. Let's see if I can catch a fish first. So. Everything's leashed down, which is a little bit different to me. I'm not used to using leashes on rods uh, like that. So they tell me if you get a big kingfish, like a 30 kilo kingfish, you can tip the kayak over. I, I've been briefed how to lean away and move my center of gravity if I get one of these giant fish. So, mate, if that's the size of the fish that these guys are talking about, that's, uh, that's gonna blow me away. Right, I've got an, an edge, it's like an edge over here. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Oh, yes. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to New Zealand. Holy hell. Holy hell. Water. I'll show you. A bit of a wave forming out. Just that one there, that little crest. I want to throw at that and see what happens. All right, let's go. Yep, there we go. We're on. Oh. Uh, left, sorry, finding a fish. Uh, left, left, left. Uh, 
<laughs> yes! Yes! Ah, oh, hell yeah. Now, it was only a small guy, but it was awesome to get this guy on the board, and we learned a few lessons. First of all, these fish, for their size, pull hard. Secondly, I'm going to need tighter drag if I get a bigger fish. Now, Steve was the last to launch, so he finally caught up to me as I hung around this point, and I picked up a couple of other small fish, just hanging out and having a bit yeah, of fun. There we go. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Yippee! I don't think in New Zealand this guy's even technically legal, but for, for its size it just uh, smoked it. So uh, I continued to jump along the points and eventually stopped at this point here. And I reckon this is probably my first New Zealand snapper that was worth talking about. Yeah, we're on. Oh yeah, hell yeah. I've got the lake. I feel that this thing hasn't woken up yet. My first good size snapper. Oh. oh, yes, yes, oh, oh. yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh. <laughs> are you serious right now? Oh, we'll clean you up. This came out of just like between those two little rocks that you can see there. This came out of smack bang in the center, and I am going to show you this fish. Oh man, this is by far the biggest snapper I've ever caught. <laughs> now that was a great fish to open the bank and start off with, but. Truthfully, by New Zealand standards, that thing doesn't even register as anything to write home about. I decided to throw a 50 gram Koga on, or I think it was a 60 gram Koga, I'm not 100% sure, but this video shows how the fishing was. So I've got a fish on that. I've got the bail arm open. You can see it spitting down there to the bottom. The fish goes back, it swims off. And I think we're in about 20 meters odd of water. So the, I've got it at the bottom here. I'm gonna close the bail arm and you'll see how quickly I hook up to another fish. Just watch that rod tip there. Bang, there it goes. Oh no, look at this. <sighs> Will you look at this? This is. We don't, we just don't have this, this we don't have this in Australia. We just As the afternoon went on, it. I started to get the hang of things. I grabbed a couple of more fish about that size and I even grabbed this uh, pig fish that they call them in New Zealand. Kind of reminds me a bit like a wrasse, but uh, really unique, really red, really bright, pretty cool. So while I was getting around in my training wheels, the guys who knew what they were doing were having an absolute blast. This is some footage from the other boats. Every boat that is on the water during this entire trip has got a GoPro on it. So these are the best catches for the day. Now Steve was hanging around with me all day. We were either shattering each other, but when he pulled this guy up, I was pretty impressed. Check out the belly on this thing as he brings it up. She's an absolute beast. I'll learn a lot from Steve over the next couple of weeks, but I like to think the guy will also learn a lot from me. He ends up moving away from gulp and using the same soft plastics that I use. And it's pretty cool to see the old dog learn some new tricks. Even Cam, the first mate, got into some big fish and it was really awesome watching him fight it with a really light rod and a 2500 size reel.
Sometimes you don't get the angle, but this was Bo's best fish of the day. Nice one. Radio, tell me that is not the coolest session you have ever seen. Oh, that is day one. That is day one. Oh, right. So tomorrow we're going to do a little bit of something different. So we've seen this off. Oh, I can't even talk. Yeah. That's insane. Two, two PBs in a day on snapper. Admittedly, I'm not a snapper guy, but you can't tell me they ain't bad snapper. All right. They just did a little bit of a ride. <laughs> I'm going to catch up with Steve Tap over here. He's got a sounder that's working, so he'll keep me safe uh, from any rocks or anything uh, in the next hour or so. Then we'll head back to the mothership, and that will be awesome. We'll, we'll go back there, and uh, the guys have got some dinner cooking. That is dinner. Look at this. Freshly caught today. Yep. That is going to be so good. That is going to be so, so good. So with the mission accomplished and our first fish caught for everyone today, today was an absolutely giant day. Today was simply about catching our first fish, but tomorrow it is our training day. In the morning, we're gonna go out and target snapper in the shallows as they all come up for their morning feed. All right, there we go. Then Aaron's got plans to hightail it to some deep pins and we'll jig for some kingfish with our heavy rigs. On that, we'll steam off to what I am told is one of the most beautiful fishing places in the world. It's called the Mokes or the Mokahiniao Islands and the Google images of this place are amazing. So hopefully it's the same as what I imagine. I think tomorrow night we might even have a surprise birthday party. If you thought today was good, wait until you see tomorrow. Pete's just hooked up to a good one. Now I've been fishing with Pete all of 15 minutes and he was just like, mate, do it this way. Oh, he's caught it for a, he's caught it for a kingy. Oh, bro, that's tiny. <laughs> Note to self, do not take father-in-law fishing ever again. <laughs> Signing out.